Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast here on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Plenty of great content coming your way throughout the summer and into the new season. And please give the thumbs up a like right now. That's the button just below the video. It really does help us out. We appreciate your support, Lord. So just take a second right now, hit that thumbs up. I'll be uh, indebted to you guys for doing so. Today's video is all about Jamal LaSalle. Now, if you're a regular listener to the podcast, a regular visitor to our website, chroniclelive.co.uk, you will know that we ran a keep or sell survey not too long ago. Now, we've got the results back and more than 40,000 of you filled in the survey. So thank you for doing so. It really does mean a lot. And basically, we asked you whether you would keep or sell uh, certain members of the squad. Now, if you tune in on Monday for the Monday show with myself and Aaron Stokes, we're going to go into the results in full on that show. However, I want to focus on one result in particular, and that is the result of Jamal Lascelles. Now, 35,000 of you, in fact, nearly 36,000 of you, voted on the future of Jamal Lascelles, and a massive 25,308 of you guys said you would sell him. That is 70% of people who voted said sell Jamal Lascelles. 10,441 of you guys said let's keep him on time side. And it's interesting because it is a debate that is raging on this summer. Of course, he is still captain of Newcastle United. He's a big influence off the pitch. Eddie Howe has made no secret about the influence Lascelles has in the dressing room, has with the younger guys in the squad. And he's just a really good presence to have around the squad. You know, he's gone from playing regular first-team football to barely playing at all. Just seven Premier League appearances last season, totaling 213 minutes. He's 29, so he's still got good years ahead of him, but he hasn't kicked off at losing his place. He's taken it in his stride, and he's he's put his, you know, focus and attention elsewhere and become a real benefit to Newcastle United off the pitch. I mean, a lot of you guys will remember him picking up two bookings uh, as, a, as a substitute. And that's the kind of thing that really, I think, reaffirms just how much, just how important he is off the pitch. He's always fighting for the club, even if he isn't kicking a ball in 90 minutes. And he's got the right attitude because, let's be honest, a lot of club captains who are suddenly out of the side would have kicked off. They would not have been happy. And I'm sure he's not happy at not playing, but he understands the bigger picture. And he really has handled uh, essentially being benched really, really well. And when he did come in against Manchester City, against Liverpool, I thought he did very well. And I think he can still play a big part in Newcastle's future going ahead, especially next season. That being said, he is only contracted till June next year. That's June 2024. And if someone comes in with a bid of 10, 15 million pounds, there might be uh, a temptation by Newcastle United to sell I don't think, unless Lascelles is pushing to go, that Eddie Howe will push for Lascelles to go because I pinpoint back to that experience and that wisdom that Eddie Howe is worth, you know, is worth a lot. Is worth a lot. We've seen with the likes of Matt Ritchie and Paul Dummett being offered new deals. Eddie Howe wants these experienced players to to hang around because while they might not be playing week in, week out, they can offer a lot. They can offer a lot of expertise and a lot of advice to not just the younger players coming through, but just the team in general. And they can be that glue that can help when things are going badly or when people need their heads lifted. And the cells fits into that bracket. That you know, he's in that leadership group for a reason. He's kept the, the captaincy even though he's not playing for a reason. And he would still have a massive role to play off the pitch next season. However, we mentioned his age there, he's he's, he's 29. So you know, he's still got a few years ahead of him to play and, and maybe this is time for him to go. You know, it'll all come down to what does he want to do. He's you know, he's clearly settled here. He's been here for a long, long time. Um, since that move from Nottingham Forest, you remember he came with Carl Dollar, who also it looks like he's gonna be going. Um, but will he want to leave Pineside? It, you know, it's interesting. It, I think what it comes down to is whether he can accept not playing week in, week out. If he can accept having a, a bit part role being called upon when Eddie Howe needs a bit of a formation change, when someone gets injured or suspended, coming on to shore the game up in those those final moments of, of, of a game. If he can accept that and he's happy with that, then I think he probably stays um, because he's still going to get experience Champions League night. He's still going to get to experience 
uh, another top four battle, hopefully next season. And, you know, if he moves to, let's say, Nottingham Forest, who have been linked, what are you going to have there? Well, yes, he's going to probably play week in, week out, but he's also going to most likely face a relegation scrap. Move to West Ham, that might be a better deal that suits him. European football, you would think that their aim is to be uh, in the top seven, top eight again. So battling at the right end of the table, but that was their aim last season and it, it didn't work. But David Moyes has a good track record of buying in central defenders and turning their career or, or, or uh, turn, I don't want to say turn their career around, but kind of boosting their career. We look at Craig Dawson, who we bought not too long ago, and he has been excellent for, for West Ham. So it'd be an interesting move if West Ham did indeed come knocking. There were some whispers not so long ago that uh, a representative of, of LaSalle's was down in the capital, um, potentially talking about a deal. We haven't had that, that, that confirmed, um, of course, but if you sell Jamal LaSalle's that this summer, that then leaves you with a need to buy a centre-back. At the moment, it's not crucial because, of course, you have Sven Botman, you have Fabian Scher, who are the, are the first team parent. You then have Dan Byrne. So if Newcastle do go and sign a left-back, you've got Dan Byrne who can who can fit in then and actually won't just be cover for centre for the centre back position. He'll be rivaling Cher and Botman. You know, he'll be wanting to be part of that team and he'll be back in his natural position. And then of course you have Jamal Lascelles. Uh, you know, you also have the likes of Alex Murphy um in in the under 21s. Kel Watts, who is a bit older, he's 23, same age as Botman actually, which scared me when someone pointed that out because I kept referring to him as a youngster, but he's 23, the same age as Botman. Big summer for him. But if he's fit, could he potentially, uh, you know, hang about and, and play a role? So, you know, they're covered at the moment at centre-back. We know they would like a younger centre-back to come in. But it's not it's not a priority. It's not a pressing uh, position you need to act upon. But if you sell the cells, it suddenly becomes a pressing priority because you don't want to be left with just three. You want four, I think, senior centre-backs to not just cover one another, but to be competing against one another. And that means... You know, the budget's then got to be stretched a little bit more. And you look out there and you think, well, who 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 would be an ideal uh, buy for Newcastle United at centre-back? I mean, you see the links to Harry Maguire. I mean, that just would be, for me, an utterly bizarre move. I can't see why Newcastle would go after that. It'd be very expensive. I don't think they've got the budget to do that. I don't think they've got the want to do that. His wages would be astronomical. He hasn't had the best times at Manchester United. You know, you can't see them going after Harry Maguire. It just wouldn't make any sense. Um, and you also can't see them really going after a big spend. I, I don't think you can see them spending a lot of money on a, on a centre-back. It would be someone either on a free, on a loan, or someone young that can be moulded into the perfect centre-back and learn from Fabian Cher, learn from Dan Byrne. I was going to say learn from Sven Botman, but again, he's only 23. I mean, not to say he's, he can't be a teacher, but you know he's still got to learn from from the experienced centre back himself, uh, himself, which is shows you just how well he's done. But yeah, you know the centre back issue would become very, very interesting if Lasalle's was to be sold. Um, would I sell him? I wouldn't. I wouldn't because of the reasons I've just mentioned. I, you, I think you leave yourself short, and then you push yourselves into a corner where you have to go out and buy a centre back, uh, and that's not going to be easy. And again, unless he wants to go, you keep Jamal Lasalle's at Newcastle United. I think it's a no-brainer. Um, unless he's pushing to go, and we know if players push to go, Eddie Howe won't stand in the way. We saw that with John Joe Shelby, who ideally he would like to have kept, but he wanted to go Did Shelby. He moved to Nottingham Forest. hasn't worked out. But the point being, when he knocked on Eddie Howe's door and said, I want first team football, I've got to go elsewhere. Eddie Howe said, OK, fair enough. Off you go. We're not going to stand you in. I don't think you would stand in the way of Jamal LaSalle's if LaSalle's came knocking on the door. It's just about the hunger and desire of LaSalle's to, to be wanting first team football. And then it's about finding a suitor. But I don't think he would have any any issues finding a team to take him on because I think an upper level championship side could come in and get him and he would play week in, week out and he'd be one of the best centre backs in the championship without a shadow of a doubt. Then you're looking at a mid-table to a side who are battling for safety, and I think he would do a more than decent job in that team. I still think he could do a decent job in this team when called upon, but definitely 
you could play week in week out for you know in Nottingham Forest for um, you know a Sheffield United perhaps. I mean I don't necessarily think they've got the money to to buy Lascelles, but he could definitely do a job down there. And then you're looking at maybe West Ham as, as potentially you know that big move for him because they'll be hoping to get back up into that top eight. As I say, very very interesting. Let me know in the comments if you would sell Jamal Lascelles. As I said, a massive twenty five thousand of you out of 35,000 said you would sell. So will you guys watching this agree with the guys who took part in the survey? I'm very interested to, to see what you guys think. So let me know in the comments if you would sell Jamal the sales. If you would, who are you going to bring in to replace him? Would you bring anyone in to replace him? Or would you let the likes of Alex Murphy maybe try their hand at replacing the sales? Would you, uh, for senior castle missing though the experience and the, the helping hand of LaSalle's like I would? Let me know if you disagree with me. Let me know if you agree with me. I, I love hearing your comments. I love reading them. I'll get back to you as well in, in the comments with anything you leave. Yeah. Would you sell Jamal LaSalle's? Let me know for me. Keep them unless he pushes to go. It's going to be an interesting one to watch. I've been Andrew Musgrove. This has been the Everything is Black and White podcast. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and give the thumbs up a like. Really do that. Please, thank you very much for doing so if you already have. Head over to chroniclelive.co.uk for all the latest in cast night news and look out for the Monday show on Monday with myself and Aaron Stokes. And check out the podcast channel as well because there's an exclusive episode on the podcast channel. So just put into your podcast provider the Everything is Black and White podcast. You'll find us an exclusive episode, podcast only, with a journalist from uh, football, Ital- Italia, who's given the inside track on Sandro Tonali. We find out just what Newcastle United have got in Sandro Tonali. It's a really good listen, if I do say so myself. Some brilliant insight. I think you guys will be very pleased with what uh, Apollo Hayes has to say. That's a journalist I've spoken to. So go and have a look for that. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your weekends, and we'll see you very soon.